Oh, Amela Goodwin Fernandez, the infectious doctor here with another in the series of short videos on COVID-19. So this one, in this video, I'm going to talk about how can we help older persons in this era of COVID. So this whole social physical distancing thing is really taking a toll on a lot of people, um, single people um, and, and older persons, especially older persons who live alone. Uh, you know, there's so much fear thanks to the media and all the horror stories and how they just kind of sensationalize, you know, the different aspects of this whole pandemic. And so a lot of people are very, very, very fearful of this whole thing. And yes, there are bad outcomes. Yes, people have died. And, you know, obviously, I am sorry for the fact that a lot of people have died and that people have lost their loved ones and so on. Right. But we are going to have to get used to basically living in this era of COVID. COVID is going nowhere anytime soon. Yes, we're hoping for a vaccine, but we don't know when the vaccine is going to be here. Um, in fact, we don't even know if there's going to be a vaccine. Yes, they're telling us, oh, there's going to be a vaccine in one year, you know, 18 months, whatever. But, you know, listening to people who were working in the era of um, AIDS in the early days, they will tell you that back then the scientists swore, yes, we're going to get a vaccine in, in a few years. In four years, we will have a vaccine. And 30 plus years on, we still do not have a vaccine for HIV, right? Um, which, which is also um, an RNA virus. And so who knows about, you know, COVID? There are so many things at play when it comes to designing vaccines. And so we can't just have all our hope in a vaccine because we don't know if there's going to be a vaccine. And if there will be a vaccine, we don't know how soon. And then if we do get a vaccine soon they're not going to be able to produce 7 billion vaccines for the entire population, you know, instantly, right? So we're going to have to wait. Some people are going to have to wait their turn, right? So, you know, we, we just we just can't bank on that. So we need to get used to living with COVID. And for our older people, we need to look in on them. Just last week, I was on call and I had a case. We had an older lady. She lives alone and her daughter did everything for her, did her shopping, collected her medicines and so on. And she was so fearful of COVID that she didn't even want her daughter to come in the house to drop the groceries. The daughter literally had to leave the groceries in the garage and then the mother would go and collect the, the, the groceries. So, I mean, this is like physical distancing at the extreme. And because of that, this lady, you know, she, you know, took, you know, um, suffered the consequences. She was at home alone. Nobody was really checking in. I mean, the daughter would call her, obviously, but then she was at home. Nobody was like physically there to look and be with her. And so she just got relaxed and, you know, kind of overindulged in like, you know, comfort food, I guess, sweet things. And so one day the doctor called her, I guess, well, the doctor calls her every day. And this day she called her and she wouldn't, didn't answer the phone, went to the house. The mother was confused, you know, weak. When they got, they got the ambulance and started to go to her, her sugar was more than 700, more than 800. It was unmeasurable. So the patient, she kind of stopped taking her medicines because she'd been feeling good up until Christmas time. Her diabetes and so on was doing well. But then, you know, she relaxed, you know, COVID, everybody's kind of locked in and so on. And so she just relaxed, kind of stopped taking her medicines as she should, kind of was eating, you know, things to make her feel good, comfort food. And so she ran into this problem with her diabetes, ended up in the hospital, right? Fortunately for her, she, you know, we got her better and so on. And we were able to discharge her after a couple of days. But there are people who unfortunately have not been that fortunate. And in fact, you know, people have died because of um, just you know, waiting till the last minute because they're so fearful and so on. And so how do we help the older persons with COVID, people who are practically shut in, right? What we need to do, obviously check on them daily and, you know, hopefully there's somebody in the community, if not a family member, maybe a church member, just somebody who can sort of make a call daily just to make sure you, you know that, you know, how they're doing and then them knowing that somebody's looking out for them, they feel a need to keep going. They feel a need to keep living. Um, and that helps them to kind of take care of themselves, want to take care of themselves, etc. right? Uh, making sure that they're taking their medications, reminding them, maybe going and setting up the pill box, you know, with all the pills, if they will allow you there. Um, if uh, they are, might be a little hesitant, but again, we have to get used to COVID. You're not going to stay secluded and shut in, you know, indefinitely, right? So we probably, like children and other, you know, relatives and so on have to kind of, find ways to encourage the older person to allow them back in physically into their lives, right? And if they're still getting afraid of, you know, you coming to close and say, okay, well, I will wear a mask. You know, if it makes you feel better, 
I can wear a mask when I go and you know just to be with them in the same place that's better yes phone is good and yes we have video calls and so on that's amazing but you can't beat that physical presence right so we just have to find these ways and just kind of talking to that you know older loved one and trying to work together with a plan you know have it be like a shared plan sh shared decision making um, about how to sort of get back um, into just kind of um, um, some kind of interaction, social interaction, um, if not physical. Um, you know, with children, if this is just an example, and it's true for older persons as well, infants, babies and infants who are not touched, um, who don't have this physical, um, you know, touch and interaction, they actually don't do well. They fail to thrive, as we call it. They remain thin, they don't eat, they don't develop normally, so they have delayed, like, walking and talking and things like that. And sometimes they can actually just, you know, fail to thrive and ultimately die, you know, to develop malnutrition and so on. So touch is very important. And we know that that's important um, with older persons as well. And we see that in the nursing homes where the nursing home residents um, or older persons in general, even after prolonged hospital stay, those who don't have people visiting them, like loved ones to come and check for them and make sure they're okay and touch them and so on and so forth. Those older persons don't do well without that physical touch. And they essentially just kind of get contracted and just kind of go into themselves and stop talking and ultimately can stop eating and so on. So that physical touch, like, it's just naturally important, right? And um, to be physically distancing forever or in depth for the foreseeable future is going to result in a lot of older persons failing to thrive and ultimately dying you know even another lady we had she was older maybe 80 her 80s or so and the, the family told us about how she was just she just started decline she had dementia but there was rapid decline in her dementia when they in implemented the policies with no visitors to nursing home which of course was necessary because of the situation in nursing homes but when that policy came in <coughs> excuse me and I know I coughed in my hand, but I'm at home and I'm going to just, you know, this is home. This is my bubble. Anyway, when that policy came in and she, they couldn't visit her, they spoke to her on the phone, but it's just not the same for older persons. And so she just went, declined rapidly, spoke less and less, just, just kind of went into herself. And um, ultimately yes, she got pneumonia and, you know, she ultimately died. It was quite, you know, sad, but this is becoming a real, real problem for older persons. And so we just have to work with them to find ways of maintaining that social and, if possible, physical interaction before it is too late.